Welcome to an introduction to financial planning. My name is Tony Icello. I'm a qualified financial advisor and I work with a great bunch of accountants, tax agents, legal and property specialists. This Einstein looking fellow here has a pretty simple success message. Make money and don't spend it. Very true but probably not that helpful. But today's presentation will be helpful to you. It's designed to be educational, non-technical and should only run to about 10 minutes. We want to give you a picture of what financial planning is really about and by the end of the session you should have a pretty good idea of what the elements are and more importantly how they fit and work together. So let's begin. Now to help me explain the process I want you to close your eyes and draw a picture of a tree in your, in your mind. Use your powers of x-ray vision and look through the walls and create a complete picture of a tree. Once you've got that complete picture of a tree from top to toe, hold it and then open your eyes. OK, here's mine. Here's the top of my tree. And here's the toe of my tree. Financial planning's a bit like that tree. Sometimes we see the top bits, but there are other parts just as important below ground. OK, let's have a quick look at the top of the tree. Each investment option is different. It provides different results at different times according to the nature of the investment and your appetite for risk. It's full of the stuff the media loves to report on, booming property and share markets, falling interest rates, all of the highs and all of the lows. Now it shouldn't be any surprise that investments, whatever they are, have good and bad times. We don't freak out just because the season changes. Investment results are important, very important. When people think about their financial plans, they can be misled into believing that this is the complete picture. But we know better now, don't we? There are other bits to consider. Let's have a quick look at the base of the tree. It makes sense that your tree has to be grounded and draw from the roots. There are six major primary roots. Each plays an individual role, but each also interacts with the other elements. So let's have a look at each one now and then return to the investment side. The first element that we need to look at is budgeting. Budgeting for a surplus. Without creating a surplus, you can't improve your position. You really must spend less than you earn. Once you have a surplus in place, you can make decisions as to where it goes. Surpluses give you choices. Review your budget often. Talk to your advisors. Maximise government incentives and benefits. Seek advice on ways to reduce tax. Review the big expenses, including interests and finance costs. Make sure that your money works harder. Automate your savings by paying yourself first. Create a surplus, no matter how small, and do it often and do it regularly. With a budget in place, you might also want to consider a no-touchy emergency fund. Apart from the obvious reason it pays bills in a real emergency, it also does provide peace of mind. How big a fund will you need? Depend on your circumstances. Do you have regular income or does it vary from week to week? Look at your spending pattern. Is it high and regular, sometimes known as kids, or can you live on the basics, just bread, milk and water? Finally, how do you create it? How do you create such a fund and where will you hold it? And if you can't create a fund easily, perhaps you'd want to consider some advice in that arena. With a consistent surplus and savings in place, your home is the next major element. Whilst it doesn't usually provide income, it does provide something that is valuable, capital growth. Over time, the property value grows and your equity also grows. It's access to this equity that opens up investment opportunities. Now your house is usually the largest investment and the creator of the biggest debt. And it's the worst type of debt, it's non-tax deductible and that makes it expensive. Because it's expensive, it impacts on your surplus. So what can you do about it? How can you reduce the cost of that debt? How can you pay it down faster? How can you make it much more tax effective? The options will revolve around your own circumstances. But there are strategies available to you, including debt recycling, debt consolidation, and the use of tax-effective investments. 
you're on a roll. Life's really happening. Good things are happening. Your life has some structure and it's bearing some financial fruit too. You've got financial assets in place. Firstly, you've got an income that allows you to create a budget surplus. You also have an emergency fund, maybe in the shape of some investments, and importantly, you've got a home. Now that you've got all these assets, you'll need to start to consider protection. Good things happen in life, and unfortunately, but realistically, bad things happen too. And I'm not just talking about a cough or a cold. I'm talking about premature death, cancer, stroke, heart attack, major accidents, the nasties. I'm sure you can think of someone who's been thumped by life. So it's time to act by looking at what strategies you have in place. What's your plan if? So if something happens, what will you do? Will you crash with a mother-in-law? Will you sell your home? Will you rely on Centrelink payments? How about busking in the mall? Or will you send the kids out to work? For most people, the answer lies in insurance. But the question is, what can you afford to lose? What is it that you will insure? Will you insure your income? Will you just cover the bank loans? Do you want to protect your investments? A review of your insurance and protection strategies are certainly part of a strong financial plan. The only thing that is certain in life is death and taxes. And estate planning is about making sure. Making sure that before we become angels, we act to ensure that our choices and assets go to the right people in the right way at the right time. Estate planning makes sure that it's your will and it's not the government's way. So you know you can't take it with you and that means you're going to have to take some steps to protect your family. Things like getting a will, making sure that you've got powers of attorney in place, perhaps looking at superannuation nominations and understanding the tax implications of your decisions. All part and parcel of good estate planning. Provided we haven't died prematurely, one of our goals of course must be to plan for our retirement. Retirement means that we've stopped working and our income has stopped, but our expenses keep going. People are living longer and we could be retired for up to 30 years. So our investments, including superannuation, become very, very important. Retirement planning becomes more important as we get closer to retirement age. However, we still need to address the questions. How much will we need? How much will we put aside now? And will our investments do the job for us? Now let's focus on our investment tree. There are obviously different options with different payoffs and returns and different risks attached. Low-hanging fruit is easy to reach but not as big and maybe not as tasty as fruit higher up the investment tree. Fruit at the top of the tree is harder to reach, so we'll need to be a little bit more careful, even though it is potentially more attractive. The fruit you desire has to be relevant with your goal and your appetite for risk. The higher the risk, the better prepared you must be. You may need to be more patient. You certainly should look to protect those investments and also protect the cash flow that feeds them. It's vital that you understand exactly what you're investing in and how that investment works. They can be complex, so ask questions. What are you actually investing for? Are you investing for the income that it provides or do you want capital growth? Is your investment basket diversified or are you just happy to put all your apples in one basket? What are the tax benefits and tax implications associated with the investment? Do you want to control the investments or are you happy to have somebody else manage them? And if they are going to manage them, what sort of manager are they? Are they aggressive managers or value-add managers or passive managers? There are obviously lots and lots of questions to ask, so seek advice. Investment planning is a living and ever-changing dynamic tree. Things do go out of shape, things grow too quick and need to be pruned, and some things just don't work unless you give them some attention. So you do need to re review and review regularly. And, more importantly, be prepared to act when things go pear-shaped. Things that can trigger a review are changing careers and redundancy, divorce and marriage breakups, growing families, death or sickness, changes to the investment climate, changes to tax rates and rulings, interest rate changes. All of these things and more can potentially affect your investment tree, so it's important that you do review and review regularly.
There's an ancient proverb that asks the question, when's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. Of course that brings us to the other question, when's the second best time to plant a tree? As soon as you can. Well that's it, that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you for uh, making the time to watch and we certainly hope that uh, you've enjoyed it.